No, thank you. All right, can we see your IDs? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see your ID. Sergeant Christian Rogers. No, your ID with your address and all that on there. So what you want to see my ID for? Our police station. Is that against the law? Yeah. That's against the law? What law is it against? This man's encounter with police started off simply enough, with an officer asking to see his identification. But in this case, the officer got more than he bargained for, from a citizen who knew his rights down to the letter. Or rather, down to the Florida state statute number. Yep. This is a Florida story. Yeah, I thought Florida Penal Code 901.151 states, Absolutely the only not. time I must present ID to you is when I'm in the commission of a crime, about to commit a crime, or have committed a crime. So right That's now, Florida Penal Code 901.1. Well, go ahead and investigate. I don't have to investigate. I don't have to commit you a No, you're not saying my ID. Yes, I do. No. TikTok user Capital Audits shared this video as an incredible example of civics in action. When confronted by police with a demand for his ID, our civilian has a simple response. No. Because as he'll state quite a few more times, Florida state law actually makes it a crime for police to demand your ID without a reason. And as you can see, this officer couldn't seem to find one. So what you need to do is give me reasonable, articulable suspicion that I'm breaking the law. The That's not, the Supreme That's Court rule photography in itself is not a crime. You and can't. this is a governmental facility and I have every right to come out and record you guys in the course of your duties. So what crime am I breaking? Our civilian is right. Florida Statute 901.151 does clearly state that no person shall be detained or asked for ID unless there's reason to believe they're involved in a crime. Ironically, this Florida man is using his knowledge of the state code to turn Florida's stop and frisk law into something it was never meant to be, a tool to protect civil rights. But if there's one thing police don't like, it's being humiliated in public by someone who knows the law better than they do. And so, in a peak Florida moment, officers continue to arrive on scene in an effort to intimidate this man, who, remember, has not done anything wrong, into giving up his name and ID. What is your name and your badge number, Sergeant? Four from right now. What is your name and your badge number, Sergeant? Can I speak with him? Well, then you kick rocks. Don't, to make sure you don't talk to me, then. I'm not getting his name and his badge number like he's not a public servant. Make sure you don't talk to me, then. In case you didn't feel like counting, that's five officers, all working on the taxpayer dime, all involved in trying to intimidate an innocent man into believing he's breaking the law. And that's surprisingly common. That's why a staggering 89% of Americans told Gallup polls that they believe police departments need significant reform. And in this case, maybe a remedial course in the law, too. After we told you that I didn't want ID, you, 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 you told me I was gonna give it to you. Yes, you were. If your camera's rolling down. Not really. We just want to record and be left okay. alone. All right, have fun. Did I, did I give you a hard time at all? Can you take this officer with you, please? I'm talking to him. Talk. Yeah, we're all done. Thank you. you. Thank you. you. Thank you. I really wish you guys would have never approached us. Either just say, hello, how you doing? After what seems like forever, officers finally acknowledge what our civilian was saying all along that they didn't actually need his ID in the first place. But with police outnumbering him five to one, that situation could easily have become deadly. And as we've learned over the years, police officers are not above falsifying a story to discredit the very real police harassment black and brown Americans face every day. But what's true in Florida isn't necessarily true everywhere. And it's important that you understand your rights in whatever state you live in. Almost half of states have what are called stop and identify laws. These include blue states like Illinois and New York and red states like Florida and Georgia. Stop and identify laws limit the power of officers to ask civilians questions without a good reason. And while these laws can get eye-wateringly complex depending on where you are, they broadly state that cops can't hassle you to give your name or ID unless they can show that you are actually involved in committing a crime. These laws have been upheld by the Supreme Court since the 1970s as a way of protecting your rights. But our current far-right court isn't so hot on due process anymore. The surest way to protect fundamental rights like this is to use them. And that means researching your own state stop and identify laws to make sure that you know your rights too. To be clear, I am not a lawyer, but as that rare good Florida ban demonstrated, you don't need to be a lawyer to use your rights effectively. But in a nation where our police don't even know the laws they're supposed to be enforcing and aren't interested in hearing your criticism, we need more than just a nation of educated Americans. We need accountability in policing itself. But in order to do that, we'll need to vote. 
at the state level, where the majority of all policing laws are made. If Democrats, progressives, leftists, and civil libertarians band together in support of progressive prosecutors and laws that respect the rights of the individual, we may be able to bend the arc of justice back towards regular people and away from the police departments that have been abusing it for decades. If you made it to the end, thanks so much for watching. Please consider leaving a like and subscribing. And leave me a comment below so you can let me know what I should cover next.